what is necessary, Mr. Speaker. And I agree. I agree even allow me to borrow sentiments of my good brother, Senator Edwin Sifuna, when he says he does not wish the government to fail because the country will fail. I want to ask my brothers in the minority side, let us support government where it is necessary to for the benefit of Kenyans. And I can assure you the cornerstone of this government of William Ruto will be open, openness, transparent and fairness going into the future. Mr. Speaker, the, another salient feature in the statement and address that was only equated to Solomon, Mr. Speaker, was on the issue of amending standing orders, Mr. Speaker. I have been the chair of JLAC in this house. I can tell you many cabinet ministers don't want to come to the Senate. Yet the Constitution under Article 153 3, provides that a cabinet secretary shall appear before National Assembly Committee or the Senate. But I remember the notorious Minister of Interior. He used to decline to appear before this house until we issue some answers. Why should we invoke powers and privileges act where we are finding 500,000 to individuals who don't want to appear before the Senate? Yet this Senate, Mr. Speaker, has quasi judicial powers of the High Court. Mr. Speaker, I allow the President so that we can improve on accountability. I might be, and I'm not saying I am, I might be the chair of national security, but it is better to have cabinet minister in charge of interior, our good brother, our former colleague, Senator Professor Kiture Kindiki, and our superb uh, chief agent, Mr. Speaker. You know the prowess on how he handle matters at the bombers of Kenya. That's the real son of Tarakanithi and the real son of Mount Kenya, Mr. Speaker. We would wish to have him sit here and Senator Wambua and Senator, my brother, Senator Ledama, questions the cabinet secretary direct. No true proxies of chairs where chairs go and meet cabinet secretaries behind doors and discuss some things. When they come before the House, they want to shield cabinet secretaries. So I allow the president for that, and I hope to see cabinet secretary. And I want to assure, I don't want to warn anybody, Mr. Speaker. I want to tell the cabinet secretary's nominees that be trade careful. The president has said you must appear before parliament. And I want to request the president, any cabinet secretary who will defy Article 153, 3, should form a ground of firing or even being impeached or vote of no confidence by Parliament of the Republic of Kenya, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the, the fourth point is on the issue of financial autonomy. When I was the chair, Mr. Speaker, and thank God you are also the chair of COG then, we were trying to push a paralyzation of judiciary fund. I'm happy that this operation and autonomy of judiciary fund has come to forth. I had Senate Minority Leader talking about, uh, is it uh, they wanted to in, in infer that the state capture of judiciary, simply because the Chief Justice and Deputy DCJ uh, gave courtesy greetings to the President when he came to Parliament. That is not the case. The judiciary now, Mr. Speaker, has the power to control their own pass. And they say, who calls the, 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 what, uh, the pipe or something around, they say, <laughs> that, Mr. Speaker, now the judiciary can, Mr. Speaker, do their own stuff. I am happy, Mr. Speaker. Police will no longer be available for political errors, including national government administration, Mr. Speaker. Because the inspector general has been made accounting officer, he's a high holder. The president has signed autonomy, where the IG has his own access to money, Mr. Speaker. So police will no longer be available. I want to assure the minority side. Police will only be to provide security, maintain law and order, as per the policing and any other acts that are relevant, Mr. Speaker. In future, Mr. Speaker, to extrapolate this, I wish also to re 